So understanding that the world is an appearance that produces the illusion of space and time and matter and energy and motion and uh, change and uh, history and uh, the evolution and devolution of forms in, in, uh, in, in, in aesthetic, in ethical, and in uh, spiritual uh, terms of, of all those three uh, dimensions of reality. So uh, prior to that, we, before there is time, and during time and after time, there is simultaneously eternity. The absolute self, we can put, put zero, start with zero, not one, because the, uh, the absolute self, yeah, just write absolute self, uh, is also known as the zero point. And this is why uh, the zero, which is a, uh, one definition of the Shiva Lingam in its original state, it's also a candle flame, and therefore it's light, it's the source of light. But as the absolute self, it's the source of both light and awareness. And the potency or potentiality of the infinite creative intelligence that is latent uh, within the unmanifest absolute. And it's unmanifest because it's prior to the emission of the space-time continuum that we call the cosmos. So that's zero. And then that zero becomes, you can just write the word trinity. It becomes a trinity. It splits into the first trinity. Trinity, and then uh, put a colon after that. And the trinity we shall refer to here is that of Satyam Shivam Sundaram, a very famous mantra in the uh, Vedic tradition. And in this tradition, the center, why it's written second, is not linear, but it's in the center between Satyam and Sundaram is Shivam. That is the signifier of the Absolute Self, and the Absolute Self then emits satyam, truth, and sundaram, beauty, okay? And shivam then withdraws. And, and, and so beauty and truth uh, exist together as principles, still unmanifest principles, but those principles begin to dance. And in their dance, uh, the Sundaram becomes Shakti and the Satyam is Shiva in, in the form of, the, of Allah, if you wish, or of uh, Ishvara. And, uh, and so, number two, they, in their dance, collapse and decollapse different qualium and quantum wave functions to create a world of divine beauty and joy. So the, what you'll write here is, just write divine lila, okay? And this... L-I-L-A or L-E-E? L-I-L-A -L -E. L -I -L -A is good. And this means that the world is a play. It's pure play, pure joy. There is no good and evil yet. That, that hasn't arisen. This is, this is Sat Yuga, in effect. This uh, divine Leela at its uh, most uh, fulfilling and total level of uh, divine power that uh, is, uh, inhabits every being. So every being is actually uh, has the power of a god or a goddess to, to manifest whatever is uh, desired. Intention will produce anything that is, uh, is, is wanted. And the, and the world then becomes a place of, uh, of every kind of divine uh, joy. <clears throat> 
Well, we'll go to number three. This paradise continues for a certain amount of time, but then Satyam and Sundaram begin to have a, a conflict. The conflict is this. Satyam loves sameness. You can write this. Satyam loves sameness, but Sundaram prefers difference, right? A woman wants to wear a different color dress every day. She's not going to wear the same thing and different bangles and earrings, right? And uh, right, different hairstyles. So uh, beauty wants, wants difference, wants change, wants uh, uh, every possible mode of a beautiful appearance. Whereas truth doesn't want that at all, doesn't want her to change. She's perfect, why change, you see? <laughs> And so there's a, there's a conflict there. Uh, and so uh, Truth, uh, being a bit frustrated eventually, at the next level, Truth decides he has to control beauty because she's out of control. And he invents the logos, right? Truth, Satyam invents, uh, or say uh, Truth em emits logos to control beauty, all right? And what is logos? Logos is the logic of nature, the laws of nature. And, and, uh, and, and uh, truth can use logic in order, we can say, to prune nature, to keep her from changing in ways he doesn't want by uh, enacting a law of nature that says, no, you can't do that, you have to stay within these certain limits. Uh, and so the world becomes ordered by logic, the logos. And in the Gospel of John, it says, in the beginning was the word, the logos. But it means it was the beginning of historic time because history begins with conflict. And the conflict is that beauty is now uh, under control and she has lost her freedom. So in the same way that, you know, when the grass grows too high, we use, we call them weed whackers, they're grass whackers. We even, you know, uh, abuse the term. But we, we cut down nature. We don't want her to grow in, in ways that uh, are not in accord with our uh, logic of what beauty should be. And it should be the same and be consistent and et cetera, et cetera, right? So uh, logic becomes a bit uh, anal retentive <clears throat> and, uh, and, and, uh, and beauty is kept within uh, boundaries and uh, uh, the result of that uh, is that logos uh, brings sorrow to beauty. And when you write logos, after it write, logos is diabolos. Why? Because it is a second power. It is a dualistic way of, of subject controlling object. So logos then uh, is well, another name for logos is Lucifer. It's a power of light, of truth, but used uh, to control uh, the unfoldment of nature to make sure nature unfolds in a certain way according to the uh, will of the logos. And then in the next one, <clears throat> Truth realizes that what Logos has given it is power, power over beauty. And now, truth becomes faithless to beauty and gives its love to power. Okay? And it's at that moment that evil is born in, in, into the world in the full sense, right? Could I write that? Uh, let's see, what do you write for that? Uh, uh, we got to five. Truth prefers power to sad beauty. And so 
uh, now the world uh, begins to, it loses that golden and silver aged quality and a copper age ensues, a, a world in which uh, nature is being harnessed to the will to power. And the love of power becomes the love of technology. And nature, the source of beauty, becomes raped by the desire for technological power and the use of nature for the resources of the uh, will to power. So uh, in revenge, number seven, beauty becomes ugly. She retracts her divine beauty and, and she withdraws from the world and, and there is no more Leela. The Leela is replaced by a simulation of beauty that is actually simply a product of logic itself. And beauty is lost and, uh, and the world becomes ugly and, uh, and Leela has become Maya and it is simply a simulation of itself, okay? So, uh, I think that's enough to write there. Now, uh, the next step then is that truth itself, having uh, recognized the grave loss uh, that is the retraction of beauty, because br beauty uh, was in love with truth and now it cut that, that relationship. And so truth has been abandoned and truth then shrinks into a lie. Okay, that's the next step. And the lie is what the Shaivites call the Anava Mala. The lie is now that truth is simply the consciousness of an individual lost in an ugly world. And, and truth has been lost and uh, power has been lost because now technology becomes the oppressor of the very one who wanted to use it to uh, gain uh, dominance. And so all of us are extremely oppressed, even if we don't fully recognize it, by all of the technological means that are weaponized to keep us under control, mind controlled and under surveillance and uh, uh, under the uh, th constant threat of uh, extermination through technological means should the elite wish to uh, pursue such a, uh, a course or putting someone like Julian Assange into prison for speaking the truth, right? Because the lie uh, now must remain dominant. So truth is in exile and has been uh, shrunken into a uh, simulation of itself, a chaotic multiplicity of of microcosmic, uh, unreal beings. And so <clears throat> now uh, this original power of truth has created a Frankenstein and that monster has now taken power over it and somehow this Frankenstein monster must be uh, eliminated or uh, it will eliminate uh, life, beauty and truth, whatever remains of them. But there has been a loss of control over the Logos. So at the next step then, evil triumphs, seems to triumph over the world. And that's the state that we're in in Kali Yuga, where pretty much everyone feels, not wrongly, uh, that the world is under the control of the principle of evil. So, 
that situation, because of the shrunken state of truth that is now in a delusion and has lost uh, its uh, capacity to recognize who it is, has lost the capacity to recognize and honor beauty for the divine principle that she is, and all has been lost because Shiva has retracted. God is, uh, has absconded, as they say, uh, and, uh, and the world is shipwrecked in an atheistic, materialistic uh, frame of reference. And, uh, and becomes ever more hopeless as the weaponization and the conflict in the uh, macrocosm of the planet uh, reaches a point of uh, imminent global destruction via the weaponized technologies. Then, number 10, <laughs> The good news comes, Shiva returns. Shiva returns secretly, as Yeshua says, like a thief in the night. But Sh Shiva begins to awaken some to their true nature, and they can bust out of the anavamala. They can bust out of this prison of uh, a false consciousness in which one feels one is simply a bodily being with very limited power, and one is able to break free of that illusion. So there are many ways that Shiva cracks open the Anavamala illusion. One of which are what uh, you called last night your near-death experience, Brian, I think, right? I wouldn't call it a near-death experience. I think that's an inverted view based on the lie. I would say you're now having an illusory life experience, <laughs> right? You broke through the illusion of this life into what is called death by the lie, but is actually eternal life and joy and love, right? And you, but you were told you had to come back into the illusion. But at least you came back into the illusion now with an understanding that there is something more and higher. And you, so you were at least partially awakened, and then your journey could begin to reach that point of the total illumination of the instantaneous realization of God as yourself, right? So uh, that's one way that that happens. And, and of course, through... Uh, spiritual practice and through uh, all the various uh, uh, means by which uh, Shiva breaks through the, the delusion. And uh, <clears throat> the reason that uh, <clears throat> many beings who are trapped in the Anava Mala uh, struggle to become awakened is because when Shiva returns, he enforces the law of karma. And the law of karma is a law that's higher than the law of logic. And so karma can uh, cause the best laid plans of mice and man to uh, going aglay, as Robert Burns put it, uh, and to fail.